My name is Gary Butterfield. My name is Cole Ross. Hey, you're listening to Best Quality Vacuum, the Duck Feed Show, where we talk about the Vince Gilligan verse, hmm? aka Breaking Bad, El Camino, Better Call Saul, and future the Hewell Chronicles. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, this is the beginning of season four. We're talking about Box Cutter episode written by Vince Gilligan and directed by Adam Bernstein. Uh, originally aired on July the seventeenth, twenty eleven. Uh, I forgot how yeah. late this season started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, me too. Um, and we are we're at the pivot point. Like this mm-hmm. is you know the show's been te- uh, teetering towards this, <laughs> but I think this is where the show straight up becomes a crime thriller. Yeah, like like primarily so. You know, and I, I think that like, uh, you know, previous, it's always been this, mm-hmm. you know, but there are a lot of other things it was doing and it's still going to ha- do those things in the margins mm-hmm. of this. But I think the balance where like 55% crime thriller, 45%, you know, general character study. Yeah. With this episode. It's not a family drama really anymore, at least primarily. Yeah. Right. Yes. Yeah. Uh, there's still stuff and mm-hmm. it's all still fun, but yeah, it, uh, and I think that's maybe part of, you know, when better call Saul came out, yes. um, a little bit of the reaction to it both ways, like people who were a little bit put off by the early seasons mm-hmm. and people who now are like, Oh, it's a lot better than breaking bad. Mm-hmm. It's because it spends a lot of time in that area. Yes. It's a huge contrast mm-hmm. to where we're at now. Yeah. Um, this is intense. Mm-hmm. No, we're in full on game of cat and also cat between yes. Walt and Gus. Yeah. Uh, lucky cat versus a uh, smart cat. <laughs> um, the, uh, so this is picks up right after the cliffhanger, dirty pool, of course, mm-hmm. uh, right after season three. Uh, and we, we say cliffhanger again, it wasn't a cliffhanger, right. whether Gail was shot cliffhanger, <laughs> what was going to happen. Um, uh, Jesse has killed Gail. He's standing over him and this has saved them from immediate danger. Uh, but you know, they, they've tweaked the note of nose of God. Yes. Like this is them spitting in the face of, you know, the eye of the Lord. They're wedged so further into a very dangerous place, basically. Yes. Tougher to get out, but can still be crushed, you know, mm-hmm. that kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. So they're being held captive as they, as <laughs> Gus and company try to decide what to do with them. Uh, and Skyler's confused about this and spends the episode uh, trying to figure out where Walt went because uh, mm-hmm. his car is still there. Yeah, we get a little bit of check-in on the characters as as is right for a season opener. Mm-hmm. You'll check in on Hank as well. This is the beginning of the mineral arc mm-hmm. for Hank. Uh, you know, fan favorite, big meme thing. <laughs> uh, everyone likes being Hank an insufferable asshole uh, who loves uh, minerals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so we talked about it not really being a cliffhanger. I was going to say there's about a year's worth of forum posts that will uh, uh, disprove what you just said, Gary. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was never intended to be. Uh, Vince and the writers knew, okay, Jesse shot Gail, and that was what we were supposed to be left with. People expressed uncertainty and also expressed a lot of upset that Gail had died. People like Gail. Gail is a fun yes. character. Uh, I don't know that Gail can exist in season four and five. <laughs> It'd be pretty funny, though. I would love to have him on the crew with the... Uh... The, the exterminators <laughs> like, just po- Robert's rules of order being brought up to the neo-Nazis. Like, I don't know, <laughs> kind of be into it. Yeah. Um, but when, when Vince and the writers saw this reaction, they briefly considered, well, all right, we have that camera move maybe as an out, but they decided to stay the course. Right. Yeah. It was yeah. Really like a Chekhov's cliffhanger, yeah. you know, or not Chekhov's, uh, Schrodinger's yes. cliffhanger. Like they might've decided in retrospect it was never intended to be. Yes. Um, so a third of this episode is one really long scene <laughs> where it's very famous. Uh, Gus menaces Walt and Jesse and kills Victor. Uh, mm-hmm. sorry to the Victor heads out there. Yeah. Um, Giancarlo Esposito terrified of that scene. Uh, it's intense. Uh-huh. It's one big long scene. It's just with the heavies. You have to do something pretty intense. Yeah. Um, and, yeah. and also does like, this is, this is also a big coming out of their shell moment for Gus. Like we had a lot of shit with Gus, of Mm -hmm. course, you know, Gus being a badass and everything, but I like how the show is showing Walt and Jesse exactly how serious this shit is at the same time. It's showing the audience. Yes. Yeah. You know, like until this point he threat, he's made threats Mm -hmm. and stuff, but this is as hands on as it gets. Yeah. yeah. Uh, This is the, the, this is Gus revealing the bit of Tuco in him, but whereas Tuco would have been screaming, uh, while he did this, uh, Gus does it silently. Um, Tugo would have done it in the restaurant as soon as he met Walt. Yes. 
It would it would have been a big to do, and he would have ended up in jail. <laughs> um, I love the scene. We'll talk about it at length when we get there. Oh yeah, um, it's the centerpiece of the episode. Yeah, so so much so it's the thing I remembered about the episode. Oh yeah, yeah, I forgot Every, about all everything this else that stuff. happens. Yeah, I, I and all of it's just place setting. Uh huh. Right. Like this isn't like you know meaningful Skyler stuff, right. really. Um. Or you know, and it's just introducing Hank. We're gonna spend more time with him as we go. The check in on Saul mm-hmm. isn't anything. Yeah. You know, th- it's just checking in on everybody. I think we're really just meant to remember the box cutter scene. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, <laughs> as you alluded to at the beginning, uh, this is our introduction to Huel Babineau, uh, who is played very ably by Lavelle Crawford, mm-hmm. uh, stand up comedian, yep. Landslide. Um, Landslide. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Landslide. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, Huel is one of Saul's henchmen uh, acting yes. as a bodyguard. Uh, a strange choice for Huel, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> it's a we get a little bit of background on Huel and yes. Better Call Saul, but not as much as maybe we'd want. No, you know? but there is there is a funny like parallel here between you know uh, SAT entrance exam of like Gus is to Mike as Saul is to Huel. Uh huh. You know, as a <laughs> as a, a comparison between uh, Gus and and Saul. Yeah. You know. Um, and it, you know, uh, one could say that heel is an extended fat joke. I don't necessarily ascribe to that as a, as a, as a, a person of gravity, but also mm. like, I, I, I like Huel's personality a lot. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> like like th- they're definitely doing something with his presence. Yes. His physicality. Mm-hmm. Right. Like it's not, like a fat joke would read to me like he's constantly falling down Yeah, and yeah. stuff, but he just, he's just like a, a scary big dude. Mm hmm. You know, like is the idea and yeah. not scary because he's fat or because he's black, but because he's supposed to be because he's huge. Mm-hmm. He, his physicality is he's a it's, mess. It's the real it's the, it's the confusion that both of us got when we were younger, which is like, oh, you're heavy. You must be real strong. Yeah, yeah. like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it, it's a, you know, it's why doesn't John Fetterman simply eat the other senators? <laughs> right, right. You know, but as as a <laughs> as a bodyguard. Right. You know, yeah. You know. Um, yeah. And he's great. Uh, mm-hmm. Vince Gilligan chose that name because he loves Huel Hauser. Who doesn't? Yeah. Uh, rest in peace, Huel Hauser. It's an avocado eating dog, Gary. It is. Yeah, I've never seen anything like it. And that's technically true. He <laughs> uh, caught me there, Huel. Um, I couldn't yeah. disagree with you if I wanted to. Yeah. <laughs> you know, admit it, Ryan Smarge. Admit it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, the two, my two favorite scenes in this are the ending and the cold open. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the cold open of this is very good. It's a little bit of a uh, classic irony, you yeah, know, because yeah. if someone's going to die in this, they have to seal their own doom, mm-hmm. you know, and here Gail is setting up the events that will ultimately lead to his death. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, and he's doing that, uh, as he has, he's setting up the super lab. Uh, this is between better call Saul and, and breaking bad. Um, mm-hmm. and he is cutting open all of these boxes of big stainless steel equipment. Uh, and he's giddy about this. He, he, he literally calls it Christmas morning when, uh, when, 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 when Gus, stuff. when Gus comes in, he's just delighted to see how big these vessels are. Yeah. It's real life. It's a kid on site, <laughs> uh, you know, and, uh, you know, Gil's very excited. Gus, it comes in to check, you know, what he's doing. He says it's Christmas morning and Gus, you know, is business about this. Mm-hmm. I want you to have what you need. You know, and he, and uh, Gail says, ah, well, I doff my proverbial cap to you, sir. Uh, <laughs> you won the internet. You dropped this. <laughs> Goon um, yeah, yeah. Pretty incredible. Uh, take all of my fives and my gold. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, uh, and he said, you know, Gus's business. How long do you think you can have things up and running? He goes, oh, within the month. And then, uh, you know, Victor mm-hmm. mad eyes him and says two weeks. And Gus doesn't correct him or anything. Yeah. You know, it just, you know, again, uh, there's a masquerade mm. going on here. Yeah. Oh. Um, and kind of almost as a, as a, as a side, uh, you know, side mission here, Gail says, oh, I ran this analysis on the blue meth uh, that you pulled mm. off of the street. Um, and yeah. if that is our competition, we really have our work cut out for us. And at yes. first, Gail does, or at first, Gus doesn't appreciate the difference between ninety six percent and ninety nine percent. It's only with with Gail's insistence, primarily yes. rooted in the fact that he wants to meet the person who cooked this. I think. Well, and and then also just professional, like this is incredible. There's yes. a, you know there's a part you know they talk about that where he's like, uh, you know, Gus says I got I I can do ninety six. I worked hard for that figure. I'm proud of it. But that last three percent is huge. It's a golf, you know. 
and you know, and Gus says, uh, you know, there's that person's not going to work here. They're not professional. And Gail says, if that guy is not professional, what does that make me? Mm -hmm. You know, which is, which is reasonable, Mm -hmm. you know, as somebody who is a a science nerd. Yes. Who's concerned with this shit. I mean, they are making poison for people to kill themselves as Mm -hmm. characters will later point out, (laughs) you know, uh, it, but the, uh, you know, he says, Gail says, you know, I, I just, I know you'd want the best, Mm -hmm. you know, for this. And this is the best. It's the best I've ever seen. That last 3% is huge. Yeah. And this is, you know, one of the the bits of evidence that ended up convincing Gail or convincing Gus, which ultimately leads to Gail having a hole uh, right under his eye. Yeah. As we're going to yeah. see here in the, uh, you know, when we're back in right after the shot or, you know, we see the shot uh, yep. and we've got Jesse looking down at Gail's body and he flees. Right. He's overwhelmed, yep. but also he fired a gun in, a, in an apartment building. He's got to get out, but he doesn't go far. We're going to see. No. Yeah. Uh, somebody called the, you know, calls in the shot. We get another look around Gail's place. You know, the, we see the bullet went into the key kettle. The tea, tea kettle. This is one of those beautiful, like, bringing bad shots where they show you something surreal and then show you the cause. Mm-hmm. So there's, like, water leaking yeah. out of the stove. And you're like, that's weird. And then you see it's the, the tea <laughs> kettle. Uh, the phone is still buzzing. And Victor rushes in and just lets himself go in. Yeah, yeah. You know, the, the, the person who called it in is like, you can't do that. We're waiting for the police. Stop tampering with evidence. Mm-hmm. Uh, he looks around and looks at the corpse. This is ultimately going to be a contributing factor in his death as well. Yes. Um, yeah. That's yeah. at least 50-50. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, uh, Victor's just not responsive. Um, and then he runs out and finds Jesse sitting in his car and then takes him at yep. gunpoint and forces Jesse to drive to the lab. Like, you know, what the fuck did you do? Yep. Uh, so Walt's still at the lab with Mike staring him down. I love Mike's exhaustion through this whole thing. <laughs> uh, Victor and Jesse arrive. You know, Jesse gets put in a chair and Victor kicks over this cart full of glassware. Yeah. Mike walks over and asks him what happens and he tells him. Yeah. You know, uh, and Mike is shook, you know, but the Mike being a professional, unlike mm-hmm. Victor, as we're going to find out the consequences for, is just like, were you seen? Mm-hmm. And he goes, yeah, so what? And he's like, <laughs> just another looky loo. You know, this is going to be a thing that's going to be a problem. Yes. Among uh, other things. Big, uh, big lapse of judgment on Victor's part. Yep. Yeah. Uh, he's my aunt. So Mike calls Gus and we time lapse to morning and cut over to the white residence where Maria showed yeah. up. Would, uh, real quick. Mm-hmm. What do you think? What do you think Gus is doing during this time? Oh, I mean. Prob- like, cause it, it take, they, they make a point of making it take a while before he comes in and, and renders judgment. I think, you I know? think that, I think that fryer is not clean yet. Oh, you think he's, he's just working with Lloyd? Yeah. He's whatever. just, just torturing uh, Lloyd. Lyle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I always assume that he is strategizing mm-hmm. during this period, which I know is silly. Like yeah. I'm just imagining him like Sephiroth, like sitting in a room, <laughs> like a fucking dark internet, dark intellectual web, <laughs> yeah. like just, sitting in a room full of skulls considering. Interlacing his fingers like that, uh, the guy from Evangelion. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yes. <laughs> uh, the, uh, but I, I just. And other times when this kind of thing happens, they show he's out doing his face. Yes. You know, he's, he's out doing, and I don't think he's doing that here. Uh, I think this is, you know, a pretty serious fucking blow. And he has to actually, you know, we, we keep seeing people in the show come up with things absolutely on the spot that are very strategic mm-hmm. and chess like, which is not really how that works. No. You know, like this is him saying if, you know, doing a bunch of if thens. Uh, in his office, I think it also serves For the better part of the night. It serves a dramatic purpose as well, I think, because I, I think it's pretty important that we not see Gus until he shows up at the lab. Oh, the absolutely. Last third of the episode, like the, it really contributes it to, to to it being oh god, dad's home, right? Yeah, yeah, and then, and also just him making them wait. For additional menace. Yeah. Like, yeah. Even though he says you know fear is not an effective motivator, mm-hmm. uh, he's tried the fucking carrot. Yeah. You know, <laughs> um, so then, ne- yeah, the next day, uh, Marie shows up at the white house, uh, and hands over another bill, yeah. you know, for physical therapy. You know, I'm sorry. These seem to be getting bigger instead of smaller. Yeah. Uh, she woke Skylar up. Right. There. Um, Skylar assures her like, Hey, no, don't worry. We can handle it. And Marie, uh, you know, she's doing everything as of going hubba hubba. Oh, mm-hmm. you know, there's like, Oh, yeah. you know, Walt's car is still here. Like, does this mean what it think, what, what I think it means? And Skylar mm-hmm. doesn't know what she's talking about. Walt just excused himself from dinner last night. Yep. And just, uh, got forced to put in the car mm-hmm. or get in the car. Uh, Marie leaves. And Skylar checks on Junior. Junior's just listening to music and then goes out to check the car, grabs a spare key from above the wheel well and moves the car. Mm-hmm. 
yeah. on the street. Uh, comes back and gives Junior his favorite meal. <laughs> Classic Junior. Yep. Oh. Yeah. Uh, back at the lab, Walt tells Mike, you know, trying to get a, get himself a little bit of leverage here. You know, like, okay, we're, we're, <laughs> Gus is going to want us to cook, right? Like, if we don't if we don't start, we're not going to hit the hit the quota. Well, then where are we? And this are, is him being really smart. Yes. Right. Yeah. Because this is this is tactical. Mm-hmm. If he's just doing the work. Mm-hmm. Like he's demonstrating value. It, it like it's an inertial thing. Yes, it'd be it'd make less sense for Gus to come just and just murk him. Mm-hmm. You know, at this point, like let me do the thing I do. Yeah, you know, it'll be so easier for you to accept this as a new status quo if it's already happening. Mm-hmm. You know, like oh, like he's just cooking. Yeah, this is all normal. You know, how do I play the part to norm? You know, this is kind of a little bit of like what he does with his family. How yeah. do I play the part that is expected of me to make everybody see that's what I'm doing, mm-hmm. and then just reacclimate after a huge, you know, disruption? Yeah. Um, yeah. Quick check in here. Jesse's just been sitting next to ne- next to yeah. Walt, Jesse's staring, in staring at nothing. Era. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're, he, he's. We're gonna get. You know, we're we're mineral mineral Hank this and then we get the i don't you know apathetic jesse Mm -hmm. during this which is not my favorite jesse right arc like when he comes out of it i think it's fun Mm -hmm. but jesse does not get uh much to do yeah for the first half of the season if i recall and he he pretty much just terrifies badger and skinny pete (laughs) yeah yeah um yeah yeah uh so uh he's saying we have to cook uh victor's not gonna let him uh and he uh mike's not looking and victor gets up and starts to cook Mm-hmm. You know? Um, and he, you know, turns to him, he's furious. You know, mm-hmm. That's right, genius. Watch me. We ain't missing no cook. Yeah. Uh, you know, absolutely. He fucking hates that Walt put him in this position, mm-hmm. but he sees opportunity. Yes. It's like, that's, okay, no, yeah. I can I, I can take this role. Maybe that money can be mine, or mm-hmm. at least some of it. And also, like, he's, he's probably panicking, too, because he knows he got seen. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, whoever well, is it, cooking is indispensable. So he thinks, well, and, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> In addition to, you know, panicking uh, for that, also just like to a degree, you know, Gus is probably a fairly unpredictable boss. Yeah. You know, like wanting, you know, also being sold by the, no, we should have the cook Mm -hmm. go in. Like, I need to try to lessen this. Yes. So, you know, lots of reasons here. Yeah. Um, We get uh, another little check-in here, this time on Saul Mm -hmm. uh, here. Um, A guy is pounding on the door to get in. Huel sends them away. You know, their clothes. Uh, and, uh, we do a little close up on the breathing, his, yes. uh, his nose breathing, mm-hmm. his loud breathing. Yeah. Uh, you know, Francesca is behind the glass and Skylar calls. Yeah. Uh, and she tries to forward it to Saul. Saul is in his office looking for bugs <laughs> at this point. <laughs> he's, he's almost in full on bug out mode. He's not taking out yes. the business card yet, but mm-hmm. you know, it's, it, it's, it's pretty rough. Um, yeah. and you know, he's, he's taking the, the, the foam columns away from the wall and looking and stuff and Saul waits and then returns Skylar's call from a pay, a pay phone, uh, obviously mm-hmm. taking Huel out there with him, uh, and saying yep. like, oh, I'm sure Walt's fine. <laughs> I don't know where he is. I haven't seen him, but he's probably fine. The, uh, there's a great little bit in here where Skylar's like, oh, like, I can't remember exactly what she says. Like, oh, he just got lost on his way home from the meth lab. Uh-huh. And he goes, oh, you're breaking up there. <laughs> I didn't catch that last bit. You're a chatty Kathy. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, and as he's saying, uh, you know, saying he's fine, Skylar hangs up on him. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then he's, you know, still holding the receiver with a rag and then looks to Huel and says, you got a passport, right? <laughs> uh, and he nods. <laughs> Like they might have to bug out. He is the only person who's appropriately scared of Gus's reaction, really. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Because he knows, you know, at least somewhat. Um, So Skylar calls a locksmith. She goes over to uh, to Walt's place. He's not there uh, and calls a locksmith uh, to come out and open it up. But the problem is she doesn't have proof of ownership and she is doing her own little Walter White like spinning out the lie as long as i am talking and this person is still here i'm winning kind I of deal. chance yeah yeah and she yeah. and she uses holly and the story about a purse snatcher to to to, to, get, to convince him to open it and she, she is she is pulling every lever she can she starts faking yeah, a she panic attack the stocks yeah. yeah like oh there's a, my medication was in that bag uh-huh you know uh <laughs> here you hold the baby yeah <laughs> you know uh please take her you know she's like crying yeah yeah, very, extremely manipulative, mm-hmm. uh, you know, uh, behavior here to get him to, to open the lock. He does, and he doesn't want to take payment or even acknowledge that he did it, you know, because yeah. uh, it, it, it's getting in trouble. Uh, she immediately turns it off, 
mm-hmm. you know, uh, turns off the masquerade and then starts searching the place. Yeah. Uh, finds the teddy bear eye, but does not find anything else right. useful. Um, cut over to the, uh, to the, the, to Hank's household there. Uh, and, uh, Marie returns home, uh, and kind of sits in the car looking at the front door with a bit of dread. Um, yes. Hank is in the bedroom, uh, kind of got a goon layer going on a little bit, mm. uh, yep. you know, and he's got about three days growth on his face and he is engaging in his new hobby here. He is bidding on minerals and he is surrounded by rocks. Uh, behold yes. the mighty geode. Yes. <laughs> My is geode will be acknowledged. Mm-hmm. Uh, and when I said this is a really minor point, like, Hank, you know, contrasting Hank with Jesse, Jenks, uh, Jesse's uh, shell shock arc mm-hmm. in the beginning of this, I'm a little bit bored by. Mm-hmm. If I'm if I'm being honest, I really like the Hank Murray stuff mm-hmm. that comes from this. It's both of them are having a story of coming back from this. Like Hank w- wakes up when he starts having leads again and starts believing in Heisenberg again. Jesse wakes up when Gus starts manipulating him and yeah. being you know feeling useful. Mm-hmm. But they both kind of come out of their shells. All of this, the reason why the Hank Marie stuff works for me a lot better is because of Marie. Mm-hmm. There's a point of view character who I give a shit about. Yes. You know, during this. And it's heartbreaking to watch her try. Oh, it's terrible. So hard. Yeah. You know, it's it's absolutely you know difficult. It's like, oh, you know, your your physical therapist today said that you made a breakthrough. And he's like, yeah, I watched, walked 16 feet in, you know, two hours. Yeah. And I only had 10% less shit in my leg. So if you and the she says if you and the whole rest of the world got together and redefined the world or the word uh, breakthrough, mm-hmm. then yeah, I guess you could say I did it. Yeah, you know, really fucking mean mm-hmm. uh, stuff. Yeah, uh, he said, you know, she changes subject. Oh, this is a great little rock. Jesus Christ, Marie, they're minerals. Mm-hmm. It's pretty. I think it's great. Nothing. Yeah, you know, and then he's like, I need the thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, he doesn't want to talk about it because this whole thing is a huge indignity. No, yeah. this is a real thing. If this happens to people, mm-hmm. uh, people really struggle with this shit, this stuff. I know I would. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, you know, this is really difficult where she has to get him up onto the bedpan and they make us watch every bit of the logistics, mm-hmm. you know, like how to get him up, how he has to pull himself up. It looks painful. Mm-hmm. It takes a long time. Like we're feeling the indignity of this. Yes. Yeah. Um, and she starts, you know, she, she, she's standing there as he is, you know, on top of the bedpan and starts trying to talk about the rocks some more, but then decides to leave. Right. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to give you at least the dignity of privacy for this. Yeah. Uh, tough stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, um, Victor keeps pouring things, you know, <laughs> as he's going through making, doing the, the meth steps and Walt is getting really bothered by this. Uh, <laughs> this is very funny. I'm glad there's a tiny little bit of like comedy in this episode. Yes. Uh, of Walt being bought, you know, having just had a guy be murdered and everything. Like, yeah. My man can compartmentalize. Uh, is, is like, you know, all right. Uh, I just want to go on record. We should all be wearing masks, you know, <laughs> everyone groans at his shit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, nobody wants to hear it. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, Vincent Victor has a, has a mask on, right? Yeah. Just, no, just everybody. Like you think, you think the chemical, only apply to you because you're cooking come on exactly yeah. uh, uh mike doesn't respond goes and gets some coffee <laughs> i love know, how he, his gun he out. never puts his gun down <laughs> yeah no, no smart. longer trusting yeah uh and then walt starts commenting to jesse and jesse is still just murdered a man mm-hmm. like there's a, there's tons of dark comedy in this like yeah. this is very funny to me being like oh jesse can at least uh, have a professional uh interest in this let's make fun get, of the new guy get, get a load of this guy yeah yeah, yeah, I guarantee he forgets the aluminum. And then Victor stops and thinks for a moment and then remembers the aluminum. <laughs> the comic timing in this is very good. Yeah. It's a very tense scene, but this is very funny. <laughs> it's just, it's um, just Walt's like, ugh, ugh. He's just yeah. looking for anything. Um, yeah. And then the door opens and we enter an incredibly agonizing sequence here. Yeah, yeah. This uh, is great. Gus, you know, opens up the door and then just looms over them from the walkway. And we enter into, I counted it, uh, from uh, Gus's entry here to the throat slitting, uh, or just, uh, to the throat, throat slitting, uh, slitting to when he says a word. He shows up a whole 10 minutes before he even speaks. All yeah. of this is worthless. Yeah, yeah. it's really good, too. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, I, I know I, I have the reputation for being captain bored by lack of incident, but this is really great tension building. Yes. Uh, I have absolutely pins and needles, mm-hmm. you know, not pin, pins and needles when you're numb. Uh, mm-hmm. On needles? What is yeah. the one that's tense? Uh, on tenterhooks? Yeah. Yeah, there we go. Something like that. Yeah. Um, 
you know, he looks down at Victor blankly. Victor looks up at him and smirks and nods like, I got you. <laughs> Look who's cooking you now. Know, I got you, fam. <laughs> like, uh, And he walks down uh, the stairs, stares at Walt, and then goes to the locker and disrobes. Mm-hmm. Like, takes off his, his jacket, takes off his tie, takes off his shirt, takes off his shoes, puts on a clean suit. Yeah. Here, hangs everything up immaculately. Yes. You know, this, this is one of the time. This is one of the most uh, Quentin Tarantino esque scenes in this little bit that kind yeah. of ritual is like the- a real like hitman he invented mm-hmm. kind of thing when i talk about this switching over to a crime thriller mm-hmm. this kind of touch of just like they call him mr clean he never gets his suit dirty <laughs> you know or something like that can feel a little pulpier well, yeah, or a little yeah. bit more like heightened reality than mm-hmm. the show always does yeah you know uh- it, it, it's been dialogueless up to this point, and then Walt starts. I, I love the way Brian Cranston describes this. He is tap oh, dancing is, to stay alive. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, and he just he he's like, oh, let's talk about it. Uh-huh. You know, Gail was a good man. He didn't deserve that. You know, he starts. He's, he's doing these fucking techniques. Mm-hmm. You know, but I do it again. You know, this is on you for making us make a choice. If you make it, you know, between Gail or me or Jesse, it's always going to be me or Jesse every time. Mm-hmm. You know, and Gus isn't responding. Gus is immune to Walt's weapon. Yes. You know, this is what Walt does. And and Gus is like, no, this is no longer going to work on me. Yeah. There's a great scene in a couple episodes where uh, Walt tries to get Mike to set up a meeting with Gus. Mm-hmm. And Mike says, you're never going to see him again. Yeah. You know, like, you, you know, basically, like, this is, that door is closed. Yeah. We know your tricks. Mm-hmm. You know? And you know. Gus doesn't give an inch, right? Yep. No, 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 Nothing. no, no response. I don't, if, I don't think he even looks at him after this. Yeah. It's great. You know, and, you know, Walt, Walt, Walt's saying, like, okay, well, you, you know, just, oh, no, that's, that's a little bit later. Sorry. I thought I forgot to make a note of it. Um, yeah. Victor starts talking this time, uh, joining the tap dancing to stay alive kind of thing, saying, hey, I know every single step of the cook. Um, and Walt tries to stand up to protest this, but Mike puts him back down. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> just like I, Mike's Mike can't know what what Gus actually wants right now, but he knows that no, no. Gus doesn't want Walt standing up. Yeah. <laughs> One of my favorite things in this is seeing uh, Mike get surprised. Yes, at the that what happened to the scene as well. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Walt starts you know spewing these things like, oh, how would he know if the precursor was rotten? Is mm-hmm. it you know? Uh, oh, I forgot. Is it an aerobic or an you know chiral? You know things yeah. like that. Nonsense. Um, I mean, that's actually sense, but I don't care about it. Mm, right. <laughs> uh, you know, Victor, and he's being sarcastic. Like, come on, help me out, professor. Mm-hmm. And Victor says, it's it's just a recipe. That's why they call it a cook. Yeah. You know, like you just follow the steps. I've been watching it for months. And, you and know? Victor, Victor's wrong because Walt raises a yeah. point. Like what happens when the humidity changes, right? Yeah. The, 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 there's, a, the, there's a basis to all this and not everything is static. Yeah. Yeah. It appears stacked to you. Mm-hmm. You know, a man who has only seen Boss Baby. Uh, but I assure you, this is not Boss Baby. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, Gus starts rifling through the drawers and pulls out a box cutter, the same box cutter Gail used to open up the boxes. Yes. Which the wiki helpfully tells us is an example of Chekhov's gun. Yeah, okay. So if you didn't know that, um, them showing a box cutter in the first act for anything mm-hmm. means that will be used yes. at some point. It ensure if somebody opens a box or something, mm-hmm. you need to know in the third act that somebody's throat is going to get slit. You might think you might think that that is only the case when the episode is named box cutter to to to, sure. to, to raise the stakes so people will kind of stay along for this uh, for mm-hmm. this kind of avant garde. Uh, you know, composition of a scene. A literary right? device, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, I also like that the wiki um, helpfully identifies the precise make and model of the... Uh... It's it's real wiki. <laughs> like both those things, the, the, the absolutely broad application of the literary device, but then mm-hmm. focusing in on the make and model. <laughs> the box cutter is very funny to They're me. They're zooming wildly it's here. fucking maidenless. Um, <laughs> like absolute maidenless behavior. Mm-hmm. Um, the, uh, so... Uh, Walt, you know, plays his, uh, you know, starts playing his trump cards. Like basically Gus, you know, if you do this, all you have is an $8 billion hole in the ground yeah. going to business. Gus stands over him with the box cutter and he gets desperate. His voice is cracking. Mm-hmm. You know, kill me. You have nothing. You kill Jesse. You don't have me. Mm-hmm. And Jesse looks over, you know, momentarily touched by this. You know, I'm still team. Walt does care about Jesse after a mm-hmm. fashion. Yeah. You know, uh, and then Gus sidles over to, uh, Victor. Uh, over this point uh, and looks furious and Walt starts again. He's almost crying. Like, just let us cook. Mm-hmm. Just let me cook. Yeah. Um, and then Gus you know. does it. 
previously yep. he has been you know uh very diplomatic uh been kind of a business bureaucratic mover and shaker kind of person making things happen by influencing people here he's getting his hands and everything about him directly dirty by grabbing onto victor and then very quickly just opening up his throat with the box cutter yep uh, uh, and then holding him like Victor mm-hmm. is going to try to put his hands up to his throat. It's going to try to get his hand and Gus keeps slapping his hands away. Mm-hmm. You know, like you are here to bleed out. Yes. The amount of blood and it getting on these people is important to what's mm-hmm. happening here. And it's important that they see it. It's important that, the, yep. that, that this not be covered as you are yep. gasping for breath through your open yep. up trachea. Um, yeah. This was apparently a very uncomfortable prosthetic um, mm-hmm. and it took two days to shoot. <laughs> yeah. Not, yeah. not too surprising. Like, yeah. it looks good. Oh, really? Like, it yeah. looks real. It's hard you know? to look at. Yeah. Yeah. No, very, very hard. And Victor Head's fucking mm-hmm. vigil. Yeah. Love that guy. Uh, this um, was so bloody. At least we th- still have Tyrus. God. <laughs> <laughs> can you imagine <laughs> can you imagine oh, the heart the hearts of the show <laughs> <laughs> this is the, the scene was so bloody that brian cranston's daughter fainted during the screening of the episode that's funny yeah that's great uh, uh and i love this little bit of reaction mike is surprised mm-hmm. walt looks dumbstruck jesse is glaring with anger at gus yes jesse immediately understands it Mm-hmm. We're going to get payoff for that later, but I love that about Jesse. Like the kind of, you know, the intellectual side of this, obviously Walt gets the, the weird emotional side of it though. Mm-hmm. Like the, the, the intuition, the yeah. emotional truth part of this, Jesse's really good at. Yeah. And just like, Oh, I know exactly what that means. Oh yeah. No, loud and clear, you know? bud. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Got you. <laughs> you know, uh, Gus, uh, you know, he flops Victor down on the floor by Walt. Walt is absolutely terrified. Gus drops the box, cut, box cutter as the pool of blood starts getting to Walt's feet. Yeah. Getting on his shoes. And then Gus, still wordless, uh, slowly walks over to the guy wash station. Uh, he cleans off his face, you know, cleans off mm-hmm. his glasses and hair and stuff, and then methodically gets changed back into his clothes. Uh, when he was getting, when he was get, getting changed the first time, it, this didn't really show up. But here you get a really good, r- really good look. Gus is jacked. I, th- yeah. I think it's important that we see him without the, without the jacket on. Uh, without the jacket and mm. shirt, just kind of like, oh yes, you know, he does appear to be this nebbish, right? But, yeah. But no, no, like he did. He, he's he's fully cloak off here, right? Yeah, it's it's interesting that they. I I think that maybe Giancarlo Esposito is just strong. That's true. Uh, you yeah. know, because they they don't. He doesn't do anything with mm-hmm. with this after this, really. Yeah. You know, it it is showing that he's there. I think the other important part of this to me is how easily he's switching uh, modes. Mm-hmm. Like him going down and taking, you know, putting on their protective gear, doing the worst thing they've seen done to mm-hmm. somebody this close, and then just taking it off and immediately transforming is showing the ease of that. Yes. Like I can become Tuco. Like I can become the the scariest, worst thing to you with no effort. Yeah. And then switch back. Like you are, you do not know shit, motherfucker. Like <laughs> welcome to hell. You don't even yeah. know my name. You know? <laughs> um, the, uh, and he walks back upstairs and he gets this one line. He looks down and goes, well, get back to work. You know, uh, really great. Yeah. Uh, great, great little bit. Uh, and because it's breaking bad, we can't be let go there. No, no. We have to always see the, the cleanup when somebody dies. <laughs> of this. Uh, and we get to see, uh, what will become a ritual for them. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, once you dissolve one person in acid, it is just so easy to keep doing it it's again and easy. again. It actually just... becomes more fun. It's like a Pringle. <laughs> like it's not like you can stop at that point. <laughs> like, um, dissolving people in acid is Pringles now. <laughs> <laughs> it's Pringles to me. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's after a commercial break and we see Victor's blood kind of rushing toward this floor drain. You know, Walt and Jesse are you know, clean, cleaning up and they start loading Victor uh, into this plastic barrel. And Mike looks on just absolutely disgusted by this, uh, disgusted by the plan, you know, and Walt gives like a, so what gesture. Uh, And then Mike comes over and helps them tip the barrel up. Right. So they can start pouring in the acid. I I read that differently. I didn't read Mike looking on disgusted at the procedure. Uh, Like, I feel like Mike would, you know, this is a good procedure. Yeah. For this. And it would be like, we have to get rid of the, the body. Oh, yeah. There's going to be other logistics involved in getting rid of this. Uh-huh. I took this as Mike just disgusted about the mess yeah. and Walt giving him a look of like, why aren't you helping? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And Mike eventually helps because they won't be able to do it. Mm-hmm. You know, but Mike, Mike has to clean up all this shit. And this is the beginning of, you know, you asshole, we had a good thing going. Yes. Like yeah. this is all of Mike's security. We're going to see the reason why he needs that security mm-hmm. later in the next couple seasons, but then also a lot in Better Call Saul. Yes. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, but yeah, they start they, they they start pouring, and Mike asks, like, "Hey, is this going to do the job?" <laughs> He's they never sure. used this stuff before. <laughs> yeah, uh, no. and, and Jesse's like, "Yeah, it'll do it. <laughs> Trust us." <laughs> yeah. They throw the gun. They throw the box cutter. They start pouring, you know, in there, uh, and then Walt cleans the barrel. You know, mm-hmm. marks it as corrosive, and it gets loaded up in a truck to be hauled away. Mm-hmm. And that's it for Victor. He's just in a barrel now. Yeah, never to be found. He's soup. You know, as yep. Yeah. As uh, as Walt's mopping up blood. Um, we, uh, we match cut this blood to dipping a fry in Denny's. Uh, this is very similar to the scene after the corpse cleanup in Pulp Fiction. Mm-hmm. Another reason why the, the Tarantino stuff was hit me. Yeah. No. This episode with them wearing, uh, shirts, uh, they're wearing a, a Kenny Rogers t-shirt, uh, <laughs> both of them the same shirt because they needed new clothes. Their clothes were all bloody. And Mike just went to fucking target yeah. and bought the first two t-shirts that would uh, fit them. Oh, this is a gas station shirt, Gary. <laughs> oh, sure. Yeah. Truck stop. Yeah. yeah. Like, you know, just went to a store and got the fr- very first thing. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Here's these guys. I also love the detail later uh, that, that they had, had to get new pants. Mike bought uh, <laughs> Walter these white, like uh, just like white khakis, uh, bright white mm-hmm. that are like three sizes too big. So he has to walk hitching them up. It's Yeah. Yep. It's really good. Um, yep. And uh, Jesse's out of his trance. You know, in fact, he's, yep. he's, he's worked up a hunger. He's got a grand slam showing up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Walt isn't eating, mm-hmm. you know, and Walt is still in the game. Yeah. You know, Walt, like, you know, how are you doing, Jesse? Jesse goes, uh. <laughs> you know, he goes, no, no, really, how are you doing? You know, you shouldn't have had to do what you had to do. You know, uh, it was him or us, though, all these things, you yeah. know, and Jesse doesn't really react. Jesse's passed. Uh, he doesn't. Yeah. He doesn't need to be absolved for this. And he goes, you know, thoughts, you know, and on what? Any thoughts on where our next move should be? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, this man is going to kill us the next time he gets an opportunity. And Jesse, who again can read the the emotional part of this, mm-hmm. the intuitive part of it, says, "Well, that seemed like a pretty good opportunity to me." <laughs> you know, uh, and it, Walt's like, "Oh, it's only a matter of time until he finds another chemist." And Jesse's like, "No, it's mm-hmm. not. He's not going to find another chemist. He's got to find one with knowledge on what he can trust." Yes. You know, I bet it took years for him to find Gail. Mm-hmm. You know, I bet he's sorry now. Like that's not going to happen. And Walt's kind of stymied by this. You know, let's do strategy. We're not actually playing a game anymore. Yeah. Uh, and Jesse drops the the understanding here. You know, at least now we all understand each other. You know. Yeah. And him, him and like, us. What? Yeah, yeah. Him and us. You know. Mimes uh, slitting throat. We're still on the same page. In between mouthfuls of fries. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Walt's like, "What page is that?" And uh, the one that says, "If I can't kill you, you'll sure as shit wish I did." Yeah. You know. <laughs> like I own you in- entirely now. Mm-hmm. You know. The, you you have no power over this. No. Um, no. Yeah. You're so. you're, you're, you're you're less than nothing. This is not going to be a life that you have. And yeah. Jesse, you know, having said that incredibly dark thing, you know, just laughs and calls for a refill yeah. on his water. It's I it it was Mountain Dew, and the only reason why I noticed that uh-huh. is because I was thinking about how it's been like I don't know, like fifteen years since I've had Mountain Dew, and you know. it kind of made me want Mountain Dew. I, you, you, you know what? I was at a gas station the other day, and uh, mm-hmm. I, it was I was taking taking a bit of a drive. And I saw the saw the fountains, and they saw I saw they had Diet Mountain Dew. You know what? I fucked with some mm-hmm. Diet Mountain Dew. It's good. Yeah, yeah. I used to drink it a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I, regular Mountain Dew, and then Diet Mountain Dew, and I switched to Diet Pop. And now all I drink is water and one cup of coffee a day. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm the most boring motherfucker you're, that ever existed when it comes to beverage. You're, you're yeah, fucking, absolute nerd. You're a fucking yeah. penitent. Yeah, <laughs> I don't I don't know what happened. I turned into Rod and Todd Flanders about <laughs> stuff like that. Um, but like I was just looking at it, I was like, God, that. And I was thinking about the day that he had mm-hmm. and him eating those salty fries. And I'm like, God, those salty it, fries and some Denny's garbage food and a Mountain Dew would it, hit the spot. It, yeah, no, it, he's he, it, he's not eating eating fries. He ordered a grand slam, the big the big breakfast at Denny's. Uh he's shoveling oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, he's shoveling fifteen hundred egg. calories of eggs and pancakes egg. into his You're face. Right. Yeah. The fries were from the cut. Yeah. Uh you know, he's just doing eggs and pancakes. But like pancakes, those aren't good for you. There's mm-hmm. no way to justify a pancake. No, no. But like when you have one every once in a while, shit, man. God, a pancake is fucking good. You know what? I would fuck with a I would fuck with a grand slam right now. Yeah. Yeah. I just uh, you know, I'm not even hungry. Mm-hmm. I just, I just, you know, like a pancake and some Mountain Dew. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, if I, if I had to have the night this guy had, <laughs> like, oh, yeah. good Lord. <laughs> what a comfort. Um, the, uh, so Walt takes a taxi back home. You know, we see, see him in his full outfit yeah. uh, there and the car is gone. Uh, Skylar comes out, mm-hmm. you know, and uh, it's just, you know, he's looking for his car. He kind of looks around and she says, yeah, I just didn't want Junior to see the car. 
and he got smart. <laughs> you know? You know, and she um, she points out his ridiculous a- outfit with his pants too big, the crisp red new chucks, uh, mm-hmm. and peels off the uh the, the, the size large sticker uh from you know, from the shirt, you know, asking mm-hmm. you, you okay? And he says, Yeah, yep, right as rain. <laughs> You know, uh, and uh, Skyler gives him a nod uh, and asks if he has his keys. Yeah. You know, uh, and he just goes back to the car, and she's very upset. Uh, I, you know, because she knows he's not okay. No, no, this, uh, is... this isn't normal. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, this this is Pulp Fiction at worst. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, he just had to go change into a, a it looks like a couple of dorks. Mm-hmm. Sure. Um, but then because it's Breaking Bad, we also have to get the little hook. For mm-hmm. what's going to be kind of the the focus at the beginning of this episode ends on this crime scene. You know, all the investigators at Gail's place taking it apart, and the camera finds his lab notes. Yep, uh, little binder. Womp womp. Yeah, his, his, his little binder that's like a middle school. Like it's literally it's almost great. like a trapper keeper. It's got like, cool it, constellations on it. Or something. It, no, it's it, it's <laughs> like got the, a it's got a thunder like a, like a thunderstorm on it. Like it's a oh, big, yeah. cloud with a big uh, big bolt of lightning coming out of it. It's very yeah. it's very goofy. And he printed out a little sticker that says lab notes on it. It's great. I love it. Yeah. That's very sweet. Um, yeah. So they have a, a serious league. Mm-hmm. You know, if you think about Gus's fury during this episode, uh, this has done the most to expose him of anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like not only is it, uh, you know, fucked up his plans and everything like that, but this is way worse than the two dealers getting killed. Oh, that God, could have been yeah. random gang violence. Mm-hmm. You know, this, this is a whole, uh, you know, somebody closely associated with them who's going to be closely investigated. Yes. Uh, at this point. And some of my favorite scenes going forward in this, uh, in the season are going to be Gus with the police. Mm-hmm. Um, watching him deal with that and continue to keep his shield up, but watch it kind of falter mm-hmm. as it goes is so fucking good. Yeah. Same thing in season five where Mike's in that position. Yes. Like these people who are so, we're so secure and so perfect at this stuff Yeah, to just uh, ultimately end up like having to watch them have these kind of cracks in their armor is really satisfying to me. Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. And great, great acting opportunities mm-hmm. for both these really, really good actors. Yeah. Um, so I feel a little bad about how short this episode is, but when so much of it is dialogueless, like yeah. they ran into that into that too. Like it was a forty-two page script when normally mm-hmm. they're like sixty, and they're just like, "Hey, we're just going to have to go on faith that this is going to time out." Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's a you know we we go as long as the episode it, takes yes. to cover. Yeah, you know, um, we appreciate everybody listening though. And we mm-hmm. appreciate uh, you know if you want to support the show, you can go to patreon.com slash duckfeedtv. We would appreciate that. Mm-hmm. We'd appreciate you leaving ratings and reviews, telling your friends, posting about us online. Yeah. Um, and join us in thanking our producer, Gwen, who also composed our theme song. Yeah. Big thank you. Uh, and uh, until next time, um, you know, again, I know we keep saying this, but but maybe don't do any of this stuff. I would say avoid it if you can. I'm not your yeah. dad, but I would say yeah. maybe don't. Yeah, it seems bad. I wouldn't do it. Um, yeah, because you don't, I, at this point in my life, 43, I feel like the chances I get my throat slit with a box cutter have never been lower. Like every year I'm alive, they get lower, you know? Uh, and I want to keep it that way as best as I can. I just, <laughs> so the, the scheme here that you have yeah. proposed is that yeah. at, at some point between like the age of 10 and 30, Very uh, likely. like it's incredibly likely. 90% likely. Right. You age out of it. It's like, it's, it's, it's like my, my ball cancer scare. <laughs> yeah. Like eventually like you're just not the target market for this, you know, there's still an outside chance though. Yeah. And I'm not going to get into, uh, Oh shit. Uh, last little thing to short, you know, short episode. Did you watch that? Did you read that thing where Giancarlo Esposito, uh, the interview where he talked about before he landed Breaking Bad, he was in such dire straits financially that he considered hiring a hitman to kill him. What? So his family would get the insurance. Oh my God. Yeah. It came out in an interview. Holy uh, shit. And he, you know, he had only done kind of bit parts and he talked about like he had four kids. He needed to provide for them. Like all that, like a man provides for his family shit uh-huh. is deeply Gus, you know, is Giancarlo. Yeah. You know, in that. And it was like looking for, and then he realized like, no, even though that would provide for them financially, I don't want to give them the trauma. Right. No. Just a, like what a, a weird a light... Walter White ass situation though. Yeah. You know? You know, to, to, to live with a father who's been murdered by all, by, yeah. by outright. Like, to, to, oof. 
I it's yeah. it is hard to imagine the desperation that would lead to that. Um, yes. What a lucky break. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Absolutely wild. Yeah. Anywho. Anywho. Uh, if, you, if you're between the ages of 10 and 30, ask your doctor about throat slitting. <laughs> <laughs> ask your doctor. <laughs> no, not even going to say it. Nope.